So before we get into this episode, I just want to say that I know this week I've been talking about my Twitch a little bit here and just like, hey, I'm going to be streaming on Twitch and come hang out with me on Twitch and Twitch, 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 Twitch. Let's go hang out. However, I know that not everyone can always make it to a live stream. And I know that sometimes I stream at some pretty inconvenient hours. However, this is where I have an alternative for you. If you've missed the Twitch live stream and you still want to check it out, but maybe you just want more of a highlight reel, you can go ahead and check out my other channel called Illuminati, T-E-A. That's gonna be linked in the description box. So it's just really quick to click on it and go. But that's where I have my streams edited down and cropped up a little bit and cut into multiple parts so that it's more palatable. I know going through a three hour live stream when it's live is one thing, but going through it when it's not live can kind of feel like not as fun, you know? So that's what I have that channel for. It's just clips, highlights, and things from the Twitch channel so you can get all the goodness on your terms. Have you ever felt like when you're dealing with insurance companies, they just don't seem to care or maybe even ignore your claims? Well, as it turns out, there's actually a reason for that. Colossus is by modern standards, an ancient software that determines how much claims are worth. And as you can imagine, relying on a computer to calculate this data comes with a gigantic slew of problems. Allstate, Geico, and plenty of other well-known insurance companies have used it though, and as some would argue, have unjustly denied or lowballed clients because of it. So hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Corporate Casket. I'm the Illuminati, and today we're going to be talking about insurance and Colossus. Colossus was first popularized in the 90s, but developed in the late 80s, so it's been around for some time. I do wanna preface this episode by saying I'm just touching upon the aspect of Colossus and computers that are used to calculate insurance claims. There's a lot more issues to be had with certain insurers for sure. And this is only the tip of the iceberg and one aspect I thought was worth covering. Anyways, let's start by explaining what Colossus is and then what BI or bodily injury claims are before we talk about where insurance companies like Allstate can get it all wrong. So let's get into it. Among computer programmers, the name Colossus has a rich history. In World War II, British code breakers called their hulking new programmable machine Colossus and used it to decipher German teleprinter messages. In 1970, filmmakers released Colossus, the Forbin Project, a science fiction movie about an army supercomputer that tries to take over the world. At one point, the computer tells its human creator, you will come to regard me not only with respect and awe, but with love. And don't worry, that's definitely not going to be the case here. Anyway, the insurance industry version of Colossus was born in the 1980s in Australia. The government chartered insurer had financial trouble since their claim costs were growing at an annual rate of 14%. The insurer looked to their adjusters as the cause and adjusters keep in mind have a complicated job at hand. Not only do they need to calculate short-term loss, but long-term losses as well. What people do in their careers and how an injury could affect their future income. Long-time adjusters have talked about the challenge of sizing people up when they're suffering. You wanna be sympathetic, but practical, and you have to have knowledge about everything from the cost of medicine to car repairs in order to be as fair and unbiased as possible. Even similar claims can end up with different payouts. In Australia, payments varied by more than 80%. So to reduce these disparities and lower overall costs, the Australian insurer worked with a software company on a novel idea. Embed the experience and knowledge of their best adjusters in a computer program. Colossus became a massive success, including here in the US. And in the early days from the way it's described here, it does make a bit of sense. When used properly, Colossus and AI could be fantastic tools. It takes the guesswork out of calculating claims to some extent, giving a jumping off point for adjusters and puts everyone on a level playing field. This is especially important when it comes to something as varied and complex as BI and PI claims. No one wants to get 80% less than someone else just because they had the wrong adjuster, you know? As for what these claims are, let's do a quick overview. Bodily injury and personal injury claims are exactly as they sound. The personal harm that can come from a car accident. It's not just about the hospital bill itself, but lost earnings, future medical expenses, future lost income, all of that. Whereas special damages like medical treatment are easy to quantify since you have the numbers in black and white, 
general damages like pain and suffering are harder to put a dollar amount to. And again, I can completely understand why there might be some sort of calculator or formula or at least guidelines for an insurance company. I'm not saying that the very notion of Colossus is despicable. Understanding the range of appropriate settlements makes sense. However, the way these companies have used Colossus is what I, as well as the Consumer Federation of America have issues with. According to the CFA, consumers who have suffered injury in automobile accidents should be aware that some insurers are using computerized systems to help determine the amount of claim they will offer. These automated claim systems could result in unfairly low claims payments. Indeed, some insurers have adjusted or tuned their computer systems to generate claims savings without adequately examining the validity of each claim that has been made. It is very important that consumers who file automobile bodily injury claims with insurance companies take the following steps to make sure they are not paid less than they deserve. One, ask if a computer was used in helping the insurer arrive at an offer or settlement. Two, if a computerized system was used, ask the insurer to provide the range of offers that were generated from low to high. And three, don't accept any offer that is less than the high end of the range. If the insurer is not willing to pay a claim on the high side, consumers should ask for a written explanation and consider filing a complaint with insurance regulators or seeking legal help if the explanation is not completely satisfactory. And this is where my initial and kind of my biggest problem with Colossus is. It's the fact that these systems can be tuned and we'll get into a few settlements calculated by Colossus in just a bit here, but the CFA continues to go on and states that, Consumers should be very cautious when dealing with insurance companies about an automobile bodily injury claim. In the last decade, insurers have been using computerized systems that often produce a range of settlement offers. These systems, the most common of which is Colossus, evaluate general damages for many BI claims, such as pain and suffering and anguish. They are not used, however, to estimate special damages such as past or future bills related to losses and reductions in wages, or regarding liability related questions such as comparative negligence or on related issues like the credibility of witnesses. And this is where flesh and blood adjusters do what computers can't. As we said earlier, adjusters would have to consider these things, whereas Colossus apparently doesn't or can't. Saving money at the expense of the consumer is something we've seen many companies do a lot. So as crappy as it might be, I can't say that I'm all that surprised. It's just a shame that this technology, which seems to have such promise, was twisted into something else entirely. Instead of the good hands treatment of the insurer that Allstate promised, 10% of those clients that would hire lawyers or not accept claims offers got the boxing gloves treatment instead. Yet it was Allstate that changed the game behind the scenes and turned the knobs of the software. So who can really blame their customers for not accepting lowball offers that they tuned? And this so-called tuning, as it's been called, can be done a number of ways. According to the Consumer Federation, here's just three of those ways. One, reduce the tuning in all economic regions for all claims by a predetermined percentage. For example, actual settlement is one divided by payment rate is 1.25 equals 0.80 Colossus high. By increasing the payment rate by 25%, the insurer causes Colossus to reduce the high end claims amounts it recommends by 20%. This is done after completion of the initial closed file study and the establishment of tuning by economic region. The insurer is intentionally adjusting the software programming so that when adjusters enter injury claims into the system, Colossus recommends settlement values that are 20% lower across the board than what has been determined to be valid in the benchmark tuning session. Two, selectively remove or exclude higher cost claims from the tuning sample, thus lowering the amount of the tuning recommendation. This would include eliminating any claims required by jury verdict from the sample and utilizing the scatter graph to remove outlier claims settled above the Colossus recommended range. A higher proportion of the insurer's settlements would then fall within the existing settlement range, eliminating the need to retune the system or increase the value of future claims to be paid out. And three, manipulate the trauma severity line in the tuning graph to obtain the desired tuning variables and future values. CSC touts this function as user-friendly in its marketing literature. An irresponsible insurer could drag and drop the settlement line to produce whatever outcome it chooses, even if that income is an arbitrarily low settlement offer. And from the three highlighted examples given, it doesn't seem all that difficult to tune Colossus at all. For example, a company can require adjusters with no medical education or training to second guess medical professionals. And if that sounds incredibly shady and questionable, well, that's because it is. If a physician does an MRI, finds a herniated disc and outlines a treatment, they have the expertise and knowledge that said treatment is what a patient needs, right? 
Yet an adjuster can be trained to review the MRI, and if they don't find evidence of a herniated disc, then they may select a different injury code. And this sounds borderline like making a diagnosis without a medical license to me, honestly. Adjusters can even determine that claimants are negligent and insurers will typically require adjusters to search for an opportunity to apply some negligence to the injured individual. In other words, if you get robbed, well, maybe it was because you didn't have enough locks on your door or something of that nature. You know, just blaming the claimant or you something for your own troubles. To some degree, this must have been your fault. I think to some extent, we all know that insurance companies can and do operate this way, but seeing proof of it in black and white is something else entirely. One paper from Cleveland State University goes into detail about how class action lawsuits were filed against these companies, specifically farmers insurance. And that's because their use of Colossus allegedly is a breach of contract, misrepresentation, violations of the covenants of good faith and fair dealings and bad faith. Insurance companies act in bad faith when they misrepresent an insurance contract's language to the policyholder to avoid paying a claim. They also act in bad faith when they fail to disclose policy limitations and exclusions to policyholders before they purchase a policy or when they make unreasonable demands on the policyholder to prove a covered loss. Bad faith can also expose someone who's insured to be personally exposed for damages. So applying this to Colossus claims, let's say you were insured by Allstate and you accidentally hit someone with your car. Allstate would be acting in bad faith if they lowballed the person you hit and that person could sue you for further damages. And unfortunately, by tuning and manipulating Colossus, this lowballing was not uncommon, as Justia explains in more detail. Generally, bad faith occurs in connection to either first-party insurance claims or third-party bad faith. First-party insurance bad faith involves an insurer's refusal to pay a claim without a reasonable basis or without properly investigating the claim in a timely manner. For example, suppose your house burns down because of an accident and your homeowner's insurance policy expressly covers the losses. When you call, an agent says it will investigate and that you cannot make any repairs until the investigation happens. However, your insurer never comes out to visit the site and refuses to answer any of your correspondence. This is likely the basis for a first-party insurance bad faith lawsuit. Third-party insurance bad faith claims involve liability insurance. The insurer owes the duty to defend and pay all defense costs even when some or most of the lawsuit is not covered by the policy except in the case of a burning limits policy in which the defense costs consume the policy limits. The insurer may also owe a duty to indemnify, which is the duty to pay a judgment up to the policy limits when the loss is covered by the policy. Another important term to understand here is indemnify. Indemnity is a contractual agreement between two parties. In this arrangement, one party agrees to pay for potential losses or damages caused by another party. Simply put, if you hurt someone in a car crash, indemnity is when your insurer helps cover the cost to whoever you damaged. So as we mentioned, an example of bad faith would be the insurer neglecting their duty to indemnify, thereby hurting the people that aren't necessarily insured under them, but that they have a duty to cover nonetheless. It seems at least reasonable to assume that people want their personal injuries calculated very carefully with their best interests at heart, and that if they're hurt or hurt someone in a crash, their insurance will adequately cover them. I mean, we all know how insurance companies present themselves. There's, you know, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, you know, that whole thing. Allstate, you know, the good hands people and Liberty Mutual says they're committed to their customers. Whether the ads are about saving money, like Progressive and Geico seem to take the that route or customer service, every car insurance out there puts forward the impression that they put their customers first. Obviously, who wouldn't wanna believe that? And yet the way they handle these damages leaves so much to be desired. A calculator is one thing, but a calculator that's tampered with is another. Not to mention the consequences and long-term pain that customers do face can be devastating. In 2003, the Wall Street Journal published an article that reads as follows. Sarah Sullivan was driving home from a date at a Butte, Montana bowling alley when an uninsured drunken driver ran through a stop sign and slammed into her. She suffered permanent damage to ligaments in her shoulder requiring surgery and months of physical therapy. Allstate Insurance Company, the insurer for her stepdaughter's car, processed Ms. Sullivan's accident through a software program called Colossus, valuing her injuries and pain and suffering at no more than $31,588, or $13,000 more than her medical and lost wage bills. Ms. Sullivan, who was 17 at the time in January 1998 accident, filed a lawsuit and received $105,000 in award against Allstate from a Montana jury. She filed a second suit seeking additional damages, saying in part that Allstate's misuse of the Colossus software violated Montana laws requiring fair treatment of accident claims. 
They don't care if you're still hurting or have any physical scars, says Miss Sullivan, who says it still hurts to comb her hair or fasten her bra. Colossus has been essentially unknown to the public for some time, so to see it exposed is kind of a good thing. It's the leader among claims processing softwares as well, with well over half of the top 20 auto insurers using this specific program. If you're insured, it's worth knowing how your company behaves and what they use to determine your payout. Employees have spoken out against this as well, like Romano, a former employee at Allstate. In the Chicago Tribune, he stated that not only could Colossus be manipulated into producing lowball offers to customers, but he says this can be done by removing or excluding outlying claims or settlements from the Colossus database. Romano worked directly with Colossus. He'd know how unfair things were behind the scenes. So how bad did things get? Before we take a look at the lawsuits and really how bad this software was manipulated or tuned or whatever you wanna call it, let's just take a quick break to thank today's sponsors. Mental health is often stigmatized, so a lot of things can get in the way of seeking help. Maybe you're afraid to open up to friends and family, or maybe you don't feel comfortable talking to a stranger, but going to a therapist isn't that different than hiring a personal trainer. It's a mental personal trainer, and the impact can be life-changing. I know I don't open up too much about my own personal life, but I have been to therapy multiple times throughout my life, and in fact, I'm even in therapy right now to help with a lot of stress management, and it is one of the best things I can do for myself. And currently I am using therapy through Talkspace, which is today's sponsor. Talkspace makes it possible to speak with a licensed therapist via text, video, or phone, whatever you are most comfortable with. It's 100% secure and it's stigma free, the way therapy should be. Talkspace puts you in a private virtual room with just you and your therapist and your conversations protected thanks to their encryption and added security. Join Talkspace today and start moving forward with a single message. Just visit Talkspace.com and get $100 off your first month when you use promo code casket at sign up. That's $100 off at talkspace.com promo code casket. Now, we all know the pain and the horror of dealing with endless fine print contracts from wireless providers. So many charges, so many mystery fees, so little explanation. So when I started using Mint Mobile almost a year ago, and I found out that they were offering premium wireless service that starts at just $15 a month, it kind of didn't sound legit to be honest. And nearly a year later, I can confidently say that my hunch was incorrect. It's some of the best phone service I've had and it's just so easy to use. It's easy to work with, to pay your bill, to have service. Like what a fucking day and night transition, honestly. And here's what's really cool about them too, is even when you do actually have to speak with them, cause they, you can literally handle everything through their Mint Mobile app. Like you don't even have to call, but I did have to call because I had a situation where I had a friend who got Mint Mobile and she set up the phone number wrong and calling them on the phone. They were some of the nicest people ever. Like what? Get this. They were super polite super quick, they cracked some jokes, and she was like on and off the phone within 10 minutes, like 10 minutes, it's crazy. Anyway, all their plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data on the nation's largest 5G network, and you can keep your old phone number and phone. So if you wanna get started with your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, make sure you go to mintmobile.com slash casket. Again, that's mintmobile.com slash casket. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash casket. So we return to ask the question, how bad did it get? As tragic as it is, what happened to Sarah was over 20 years ago. So have things improved since then? Well, the answer is not really. If everything was fine and dandy, I probably wouldn't be here making today's episode. Apparently, Allstate became so renowned for their boxing glove technique instead of their good hands practice that there were lawyers that refused to take Allstate cases. And the reason they did that was they knew that Allstate would fight you all the way to court and it would get ugly. The Herald Tribune wrote in 2008 that, though details are not available, Allstate's own records show the insurer average payment for bodily injury cases dropped 20% as it adopted Colossus nationwide. Automation put Allstate at the forefront of a change in the insurance industry. Most major insurers now use the software to evaluate claims. At a business conference in 2006, Allstate announced it was spending another $95 million to add the technology. They pay less than every single insurance company and they certainly will spend more on litigation, said Healy, a former Allstate lawyer who was with the company after it implemented its current claim strategy. They put pressure on people by establishing that they are a bully in the market. Allstate contends it operates within the structures of state insurance regulations and points to a New Mexico review that found no fault with the company's claims practices. 
Their bullying tactics were so infamous that a book was written about it, from good hands to boxing gloves. And seriously, you know a topic is gonna be shady and frustrating and complicated when there are entire books on the very subject. The Herald continued, explaining how regulators had to review hundreds of claims only to learn that those who suffered contestable injuries in minor accidents and hired attorneys were unfairly targeted. Allstate's goal of paying only what is owed on any given claim is commendable, Virginia regulators wrote in 1999. However, the method the company chose to reduce overpayments has led to violations of the Unfair Claims Settlement Practices Act. The Unfair Claims Settlement Protection Act in 1990 is meant to prevent insurers from misrepresenting policies, influencing other policy settlements, ignoring or refusing legitimate claims, delaying forms, forcing you to sue to recover reasonable damages. You get the picture here. Some cases have alleged Allstate has violated the USSPA in the past though, and their lawsuit in 2010 was certainly not a good look. This was their turning point or when so much of it went public at least. In 2010, after an 18 month investigation, Allstate had to pay $10 million to 45 states in a regulatory settlement involving its use of claims handling software. Allstate Corp, the parent of Allstate, agreed to pay $10 million and put new procedures in place after improperly using this software. Over 40 states, including New York, Florida, Illinois, and Iowa were involved in this investigation. And you know a company's done wrong when you can get over 40 states to actually agree on something. Of course, aside from their poor handling of Colossus, there were other inconsistencies of how they tuned the program, according to the New York State Department of Insurance. However, it is important to note that we found no systemic underpayment of bodily injury claims, New York Insurance Superintendent James J. Ryan said in a release. Under the agreement, Allstate will notify claimants that it may use the software in adjusting their claims. It agreed to better oversee the software to ensure that the company follows established criteria and rules for which claims are used to tune the software to reflect recently settled claims. Of course, Romano, the former employee I mentioned earlier, called this an incomplete examination and a slap on the wrist. He says that he worked on tuning the Colossus, upgrading the system, training employees on it, analyzing trends, and representing the company at industry conclaves about Colossus. So by his account, it certainly seems systemic or at least a far cry from just a few mistakes. But what about other companies though? I know I've been ragging on Allstate for just a little bit now, probably because they're the most infamous for this Colossus stuff, but they're far from the only ones using this technology. Geico does it too. Now, Geico on the other hand uses Claim IQ. And I wanna point out that many of the law firm websites I've come across have wording here that says they're scandalized that Geico or Allstate will use a computer. For example, one source writes, Geico admitted that they use a computer rather than a human to recommend damages for one woman's pain and suffering. Using a computer to get a sense of a range, what they're able to pay out and to find some sort of baseline, that sounds reasonable to me, but that's just it. It's good for a baseline. I'm not condemning the use of computers for insurance claims altogether. It's the tuning and the lowballing that's worrying and the way that situations can and have been manipulated to benefit the insurer. Using computers to some extent may be necessary, but relying on them for such personal situations, well, it's no wonder it can lead to these types of issues. With that said, we're going to go over some of these lawsuits just to get a sense of the problem. Donna Hickel was hurt when another vehicle rammed her pickup on December 27, 2010. The injuries to her head, neck, and back left her dizzy, sometimes in excruciating pain and required surgery, Hickel said. The lawsuit also says, Geico lowballed her claim, placing its interests ahead of Hickel's. A, Geico intentionally trained its ingesters to make lowball offers to claimants. B, Geico failed to promptly and reasonably investigate and pay her claim. Geico is liable for more than $100,000 for the injured woman's medical expenses, loss of wages, disability, pain, and suffering, the lawsuit says and also more than $100,000 in punitive damages. Geico responded June 10th. The company acknowledges that it used a computer program known as Claim IQ to make some recommendations for compensating Hickel, but says other factors were taken into account as well. Geico claims that it trained adjusters to make lowball offers or that it failed to handle Hickel's claim in a timely and reasonable manner. The thing is, Hickel's truck was hit by an underinsured motorist, Kaylee Tuttle. They didn't fully cover Hickel's damages, but Geico did not want to take on the expense either, even though she was insured for this very scenario. Last November, Hickel's attorneys identified more than $71,000 in medical expenses to Geico. The same day, Geico's adjuster offered Hickel $24,000 in addition to the $100,000 policy limit placed by Tuttle's insurer. And I don't know Donna Hickel's situation completely. I'm not aware of how much she made, what her lost wages were, or any of those details because those are not available to us. 
But when you take out the 70,000 for medical expenses, that leaves about 50,000. It's a hefty sum, absolutely. But given any future medical expenses and lawyer's fees, I don't really know if that's actually gonna cover her. It does seem like at best, it's frustrating that Donna had to get a lawyer involved in the first place. And at worst, this reminds me of the part in the UCSPA where it states you shouldn't have to sue an insurer to recover reasonable damages. More recent lawsuits against Geico have alleged that they're also have been charged with excessive premiums since during the pandemic, car crash rates were at an all time low and their premiums didn't drop enough to reflect that. Though this isn't directly related to Claim IQ and Geico, it could truly be a future episode in of itself, but it does demonstrate the need that insurance companies are ultimately there to make money and not really to watch out for the people they claim to insure. Even though not all lawsuits against Geico involving Claim IQ have been clear cut, enough of them have been filed and enough law firms have spoken out against Allstate to paint a pretty clear picture about what these calculators and formulas are actually up to. Again, Allstate definitely seems like it's the worst one out there, but considering how commonly used this kind of tech is, I think it's worth addressing the topic as a whole. I don't want anyone walking away from this thinking, oh, I don't have Allstate, so this would never happen to me. Farmers, MetLife, USAA, and many others use Colossus or variations, but it's how they use it that I believe is the most important, and obviously they probably won't disclose that. Now, maybe some of you have had fantastic experiences with Allstate, even though they've actually been called one of the worst insurers out there. And maybe some of you who've been in personal injury lawsuits have been happy with the settlement you've gotten. I'm not trying to imply that it's impossible with Colossus, just to state that Colossus has some colossal issues over the years, pardon the pun. And if you are offered a claim or damages that seem suspiciously low, it's worth asking where they got those numbers from and keeping the idea of tuning in mind. Some sources such as the Consumer Federation recommend demanding to see the range of the results the computer generated and not accepting anything less than the high end. Then if the insurer doesn't agree to settle at the high end, you should consider filing a complaint with your state insurance commissioner and seeking legal help. Insurance companies should be helping their customers and it's time we hold them to that. But with all of that being said, that is where I'm going to end today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new today because I thought this was something that I felt like it was this weird kind of open secret and, but I like, I don't hear anyone talking about it. And I was like, do you guys know a computer is really determining this and they tweak that thing? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you're liking, following and subscribing so you can stay up to date on all the latest episodes. I appreciate you taking some time out of your day to spend it here with me. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.